Right, an electroscope is a device which is used to detect the presence of charge. See why the leaves of an electroscope move apart when a charge is present by going to the next part. So we'll do that in a second. But just before we get there, Louise, if you could just pan across to this. This is known as a gold leaf electroscope. Right? It's got a metal cap. It's got a rubber uh, insulating uh, bone, for want of a better term, right there. And coming down here, you've got a metal leg on the right-hand side and a little gold leaf on the left-hand side. You can just about make out the gold leaf. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I'll we'll pass it around. We get to see it in more, much more detail. Can you you focus it on there? Uh. So cap on top. Basically, all you've got is a metal cap connected to a metal leg down at the bottom, and then you've got a gold leaf connected to it, but it's just hanging down just beside it. Okay. So if I leave it here, in fact, I will do it here just for the camera, and then we can see it ourselves later on. Do we have a rod over there? A charge rod. So in this case, if I bring a charge material up to it. Can we see it here? So let's bring it back so the class can see it. So you've got a gold leaf hanging down beside it. I bring a charge right up to it. Can you see it lifting up like that? Okay, one last time. The camera again. Now, why does that happen? Not magnetic, no. But I haven't that said there is a magnetic element to electricity, but it's not important here. Is the extra electrons on that thing transfer down and the positive charge of the little thing sticking in? Okay, let, let's, let's bring it forward a little bit. You've got two legs here, the two come apart. Why would the two move apart? Because they're both of the same what? Charge. The same, both of the same charge. Let's imagine, well, this is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The gold leaf is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. What are the only things that can move? So let's imagine I charge this negatively. So this now has lost. So it has gained electrons. You can't use protons yet, so I have to think about it myself. It's gained electrons. I bring a negatively charged object up to here. What's going to happen? The electrons are going to go up to that because it's positive charged. More positive charged now. This one is negatively charged. Yeah. So that one's more positively charged. At the moment, that's neutral. Oh, where's the more positive charged now? Yeah, okay, it's more positively charged yeah. in this one, that'd be correct, right? So, yeah. therefore? Uh, the negative and the positive uh, attract. No. And like goes attract. That might be the case. So that might be slightly attracted to that. That, it, that would be the case, actually. That because some of the electrons, think about it. What do the electrons here do on top of that disk? Remember, they can move. I bring a negatively charged object here. Go What's going to happen to the electrons on the cap? They will go down. Some of them will go down on the right hand side, some of them will go down on the left hand side. So now what happens, the two legs down at the bottom? What charge do the two legs have on the bottom? Negative. They're both, because the electrons have left the top, they've both gone down to the bottom, and as a result, the similar charge, the only thing that can move is the gold leaf, so it just moves up like that. Now technically speaking, when I take this away, it should fall back down again and I'm not too sure why that doesn't happen. It somehow maintains its charge. I'm not terribly sure what's going on there. It's probably got something to do with all the static in the air, but beyond that, I don't know. But this is known as a gold leaf electroscope. You will have to give a diagram of it. You will have to be able to explain how it works. Okay? So, let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Right? We're back up to here. So see why the leaves of an electroscope move apart. Now, what you might see here in many of the diagrams is you'll see positive charges moving one way and minus charges moving the other way. When people first try to make sense of this, they thought there were two types of charge, and there are pluses and minuses. But they figured that it was the pluses going one way and the minuses going the other way. We now know that it's only the minuses which move, the electrons, but it's the same overall effect. So you can describe something as if it's pluses and minuses moving, the very same as if it was just minuses moving. Okay? So if you think about the electroscope, if the minuses move to the bottom, the top of it is what charge left? A positive charge. So it's as if positive charges move to the top. It has the same overall net effect. So here we go, anyway. If I bring up my, uh, my charge rod, here we've got minuses and pluses. You can just about make it out. It's not all that clear. Here comes my charge rod, negatively charged. Because the negative charges on the electroscope feel the electric field from these guys here, they are repelled and they move down. That's all there is to it. Now what should happen, when I take this away, it's what? They should go back up. They should go back up because now what you've got are a lot of negative charges beside each other and they don't really like the being beside each other. So given the option, 
they would go back up when I take this away. So when I took my hand, finger off the top of that electroscope, and I kind of said, ah, this should work properly. We should be able to explain that in physics terms, why did the legs not collapse? Because they should collapse in theory. If they didn't collapse, they didn't break any laws of physics, we should be able to explain why did they collapse in terms of physics. So rather than me just ignoring it, we should be able to somehow come back to that and see what happened. So I keep going here, and at this stage, it didn't show them coming back afterwards, but it does say that. So we're up to charging objects. The same principle can be used to explain the phenomenon of charging by induction. Go to the next card to see an animation. So in this case, what happens? If we've got Rachel back here again, or sorry, Louise. Two domes like this, neutral to begin with. Did you test that out? Yeah. And does it work? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Two objects, both neutral to begin with. If they had an excess of charge in one or the other, the fact that I touch my hand off it means I do what to it? What's the phrase we use? Inside. Getting, grounding it, or I'm putting the charge back to zero, or just erting. So grounding or erting would be the same phrase. So I just want to make sure there's no overall charge on those, so I erted two of them to begin with. They're both insulated. So what I want to do is put a charge on one of them. In fact, I want to put a charge on both of them. Right? But they're insulated to begin with, so I want to make sure that when I do put the charge on it, it stays on it. And this is how we're going to do it. Rachel, if you hold the one dome there again, I need to just touch the two off of each other. I'm going to bring up a charged object. I can never remember whether this is going to be charged positively or negatively. You don't need to remember which, so we're just going to say it's negative because it's easier to remember. So in this case, I charge it negatively, so it's got lots of extra electrons. This one has got protons and neutrons. The second guy's got protons and neutrons. I bring the rod up to it, but not touching it. What's going to happen? Electrons, electrons will move from the first one, they'll be repelled by the char negatively charged rod, and onto the second one. Okay? Now, while still holding the charged rod there, Rachel is now going to take the second one away. And now I bring this back. Those are now both charged. One is negatively charged because all the extra electrons went over there. The other guy is positively charged because what's left behind was positive charge here. Sounds wonderful, except it could all be a load of magic, and nobody's going to know whether I'm telling the truth or not. So we've got, got to come along and test it to see is one charged and not charged. And technically, to make sure it was a fair test, I should have tested them both at the beginning to make sure they were both neutral at the beginning. But this is a Coulomb meter. Charge is measured in Coulombs. So if you've got a lot of electrons, you've got a lot of Coulombs. If you've got very few electrons, you've got a very small amount of Coulombs. So a lot of charges together form one Coulomb. And we'll see later on how many electrons are actually in Coulomb. Right? What I want to do here is just see the charge of both of those. Remember I said I was bringing up a negatively charged rod, so I said this one should be positive and that one should be negative. Well, I can't remember which is which, so I might get it wrong. So I bring this guy up to it, and you get a zero charge to begin with, and all I want to do, as soon as I touch it off of it, the electrons will move from the dome onto the Coulomb meter, and I get a charge of what? You see that there? No. Focus it in, take your time. Six. Yeah. Six, thank you. We discharge, we look at the second one. What should be my charge on the second one? It should be minus six. If it doesn't, it's because Johnny broke it when he put in the battery. So away we go again. And we test it this time around. And just touch it off it so all the electrons are as many as possible will go from the dome to escape each other and back onto the meter here. Oh my god, it's minus six. You get a reading of? Minus six. You can focus on it? Yeah. Perfect. So we have charged two objects. And to be a little bit more precise, we have charged them by induction. And in an exam, and you will get this in any class exam, I ask you, I will ask you, how do you charge an object by induction? Induction means without touching them. Well, I presume that's what it means, because that's what's special about this. I could charge it by trying to rub a cloth off it or whatever. Right? By induction means I'm charging it without touching it. Right? And then just to be clear about this, what I should have done was actually showed you at the very beginning that when I discharge it totally, it's got no charge on it. So there was no charge on it to begin with. 